Last time, we saw conic sections arise. This time, we prove that they are indeed conic sections. We also mentioned that they are curves of the second order. Curve of the second order means any line in the plane shares at most two points with it. And any point in the plane shares at most two lines with it. In other words, the curve has no loops, no inflections, and no cusps. The curves produced last time are the locus of the points joining projective lines, and on the other hand, the locus of the lines joining projective points. In the pointwise construction, consider an arbitrary additional line, shown here in black. Its intersections with the projective pencils are paired by the projection. In this pairing of collinear ranges, known as an involution, any point that may happen to belong to the curve will obviously be its own projection. That applies to R and R double prime in this example, and also to T and T double prime. If it applied to a third point, then it would apply to all the points of the line simply because cross-ratio is maintained in projection, as proved in the installment on perspective and projection. In other words, then the curve would be a degenerate conic, namely just the black line. Therefore, the curve has at most two points in common with any line. It is thus of the second order. Can you see how the same reasoning applies to the polar situation on the right? Pause if you want to try it on your own. In the linewise construction, consider an arbitrary additional point shown here in black. The lines connecting it with the projective ranges are paired by the projection. In this pairing of co-punctual pencils, known as an involution, any line that may happen to belong to the curve will obviously be its own projection. That applies to O and O double prime in this example, and also to P and P double prime. If it applied to a third line, then it would apply to all the lines of the point, simply because cross ratio is maintained in projection as proved in the installment on perspective and projection. In other words, then the curve would be a degenerate conic, namely, just the black point. Therefore, the curve has at most two lines in common with any point. It is thus of the second order which does not necessarily make it a conic. A Steiner pointwise curve is determined by five points. Proof. According to the fundamental theorem, which was proved the time before last, 
Three correspondences determine a projection. Add to those three the two points containing the projective pencils, and you have five. It follows that changing the rolls of the five points, or using any other points of the curve, likewise results in the same curve. The five points are the five free and easy points shown in the last installment. Just start by choosing them arbitrarily. Treat two of them as A and E, the centers of the projective pencils, and one as the intersection of B and D, the perspective lines. The other two are the intersection of AC with D and that of B with CE. So that lets you find B, D, and the middle pencil, C, also known as the center of projectivity. Now the simple alphabetical procedure shown last time generates the points of the curve. And because the whole construction relies merely on the two fundamental procedures of connecting two lines and connecting two points, also known as the first two propositions of this whole course, there are no five coplanar points for which it does not work. If three or more are collinear, a degenerate conic results. Ready to polarize? A Steiner line-wise curve is determined by five lines. Proof. According to the fundamental theorem, which was proved the time before last, three correspondences determine a projection. Add to those three the two lines containing the projective ranges, and you have five. It follows that changing the rolls of the five lines, or using any other lines of the curve, likewise results in the same curve. The five lines are the five free and easy lines shown in the last installment. Just start by choosing them arbitrarily. Treat two of them as A and E, the axes of the projective ranges, and one as the connector of B and D, the perspective points. The other two are the connector of AC with D and that of B with CE. So that lets you find B, D, and the middle range C, also known as the axis of projectivity. Now the simple alphabetical procedure shown last time generates the lines of the curve. And because the whole construction relies merely on the two fundamental procedures of connecting two points and connecting two lines, also known as the first two propositions of this whole course, there are no five coplanar lines for which it does not work. If three or more are copunctual, a degenerate conic results. Now, if Steiner's point-wise and line-wise constructions can under any circumstances produce a circle, then by perspectivity, you can change it into any conic section. Indeed, that is the meaning of conic section, a circle 
seen in perspective. It's easy. Just tilt the page, copy points or lines A, C, and E, and lines or points B and D into a perspective drawing using the handy method shown here, and repeat the construction, and you will get another conic. And conversely, because perspective is reversible, or as they say, bijective, you can change any conic into a circle. Furthermore, any five coplanar points or lines determine a conic. That is why the general Cartesian equation of a conic has six coefficients. Dividing both sides by one of the coefficients leaves you with five unknown constants. Here, P, Q, R, S, and T. So it takes five points or tangents to limit the equation to one solution. This picture of a pencil of conics in four points is just to show that four are not enough to determine a conic, and also to help you see that any fifth point of the plane will lie with the other four in exactly one conic. And this picture of a range of conics in four lines is to show that four are not enough to determine a conic. And also to help you see that any fifth line of the plane will lie with the other four in exactly one conic. Note that the four lines common to all the conics in this picture are not themselves shown as opposed to the de degenerate conics, of which you can find six if you look closely. Since any five points or lines in a plane lie in a conic, any five points or lines in a plane are the perspective image of five points or lines of a circle and hence the Steiner curve generated from any five points or lines in a plane is the image of a circular Steiner curve, if indeed there is such a thing. And that in turn would mean that these constructions always generate circles or circles in perspective, which is to say, conics. To construct a circle projectively, you must resort to such metric devices as infinitely distant points and parallels. Here's how. Shown here in black, are again the pencils and ranges of a projection, all coplanar. Choose any A and E to be the centers of the first and last pencils. Choose B parallel to AE and half as far from AE as A is from E. Let D be the perpendicular bisector of the finite segment AE. That makes the intersection of B and D, here X, the orthogonal corner of a 45 degree right triangle with A and E. Let C the center of projectivity, 
be the infinitely distant point of EX. Now choose any line J in A. It determines a point K in B. K determines the line J prime in C. That is, J prime is always parallel to EX in this setup. Therefore, it is always perpendicular to AX. J prime, in turn, determines a point L in D, which finally determines J double prime in E, projective to J. Call the intersection of J and J double prime Q. Steiner's pointwise curve is the locus of Q as line J rotates through the pencil in A. Call the variable angle of J theta, measured counterclockwise from the line AE. That makes angle KAX 135 degrees minus theta, simply because angle KAQ has to add up to 180. And it makes angle LKQ 45 minus theta, because QAE and QKX as corresponding angles on parallels are congruent. Call the intersection of AE and KL M and connect it with X. The symmetry of the quadrangle AXKM shows that the angle KMX is congruent with KAX, which, by subtraction from 180, leaves angle EMX equal to theta. The symmetry of the quadrangle E L M X shows that angle E L X is also theta. A little more subtraction and angle K L Q can be known. And now triangle K L Q by some advanced subtraction turns out to be a right triangle. The thetas cancel out, meaning it doesn't matter what angle you choose. In other words, in this setup, projective lines in A and E are always perpendicular. And that makes the locus of Q a circle. This is presupposed here as relatively well known, related as it is to one of the theorems of Thales. This is the same setup, polarized, and also rotated 90 degrees for the sake of the horizontal picture format. So the resulting conic should correspond by polarity to the pointwise circle we just had. What figure is polar to a circle, we are about to find out. 
shown here in black, are again the ranges and pencils of a projection, all coplanar. Construct a two by two square, here Q R S T. Make opposite sides A and E, the axes of the first and last ranges. Make the midpoint of one of the other sides B. Let D be the infinitely distant point of the side in B. Let C, the axis of projectivity, be the diagonal of the square. Now, choose any point X in A. It determines a line K in B. K determines the point X prime in C. X prime, in turn, determines a line K prime in D, that is, a parallel, which finally determines X double prime in E, projective to X. Call the line connecting x and x double prime L. Steiner's linewise curve is the locus of L as point x cycles through the range in A. Call the center of the square O. Call the midpoint of side A of the square P and call the distance from P to X, X, measured from left to right. That is, if X lies to the left of P, the distance X counts as negative. Call the intersection of the midline of the square in B with the perpendicular from X, V and call the intersection of that same midline with K prime Y. Now you can find various parallel intercepts, which by another theorem of Thales gives you similar triangles. For instance, B, Y, X prime and B, V, X. That is, X prime Y is to X, V as B, Y is to B, V. The distance X, V is one. Thanks to that 45 degree angle, O Y X prime is isosceles. So O Y is the same distance as X prime Y. That makes B Y equal to X prime Y plus one. And B V is obviously the distance X plus one. Cross multiply and simplify, and it turns out that x prime y is simply the inverse of the distance x. The Pythagorean theorem establishes the distance x, x double prime. and O X double prime and O X.
Now take the two distances marked here in red and square each of them. And the squares happen to add up to the square of x, x double prime. In other words, by the converse of Pythagoras, x o x double prime is always going to be a right triangle. Further, consider its proportions. Express the ratio of the legs as a fraction Apply some algebra, and it turns out that OX is to OX double prime as the distance X is to 1. Math is hard. And that means this triangle is similar to XPO. Also known as has the same angles, which then permits deductions about a couple of other angles as well. Now construct the perpendicular to L from O. Call the foot Z. Clearly, OZ x double prime and OU x double prime are congruent. Therefore, OZ always has a length of 1. In other words, in this setup, L always moves at the same distance from O. And that makes the locus of L a circle. Here is a decluttered version. It's simple to construct. Shall we review our lemmas? Steiner's pointwise and linewise constructions can generate circles. Exchanging the five starting points or lines with others of the same curve generates the same curve. Therefore, any five points or lines of a circle generate that circle. Steiner's constructions work for any five coplanar points or lines. Any five coplanar points or lines are the perspective image of five points or lines of a circle. Because the construction relies merely on incidence and incidence is preserved in perspective, the curve generated by this method from any five coplanar points or lines is the perspective image of a circle, also known as a conic section.